Ready? Go! So, if you saw my previous video, you now know that I got Min Min to Elite Smash. So, of course, that means I am now qualified to give a week one guide on how to play Min Min. In all seriousness, this is just a starter guide, a beginner guide, if you will, for the people who, you know, want to pick Min Min up and are having trouble, you know, getting wins with her. The information in this video should probably help you out a little bit. Now, I'm no Zero or Mewtwo King or Leffen, so why should you listen to me? Well, I've been playing and watching competitive Smash for over 10 years now, and you know what they say? Those who can't do, teach. And those who can't teach, teach gym. And uh, recently I've kind of realized that even if I'm not the greatest at doing something or executing something, I'm usually pretty good at understanding it and being able to kind of explain and teach the proper way to do it or execute it. So enough rambling, let's get into the Min Min basics. Now before we get into, you know, all, all of her moves and whatnot, um, we should explain the arm mechanic. So she's got two different arms and you control the uh, the dragon one here with the A button and it's always going to be the dragon one and then her other arm, the right arm, you control with the B button and that's the one that you can also switch around. Controlling the left and right arm separately is a completely unique mechanic that only Min Min has but the way that her arms work and her basic attacks work is very similar to Mega Man here. So with Mega Man, his jab is the buster, or the lemons as we like to call them. And his forward tilt is also the lemons, but it'll make him walk forward as he does it. And then, his neutral air is also the lemons. So his jab, his neutral air, and his forward tilt are all the, are all the same move. Oh, I'm, I'm mashing stuff here. So similarly with Min Min, <coughs> Her jab is an arm extend, her forward tilt is a walking arm extend, and then instead of it being neutral air, her forward air is an aerial arm extend. So it's kind of the same thing as Mega Man, um, just instead of neutral air, it's, it's forward air that does the arm. So forward air is the exact same as forward tilt which is the exact same as jab. Oh, and back air. How can I forget about back air? Back air is also the same as forward air, which is also the same as jab, which is also the same as back air. Back air, forward air, jab, and forward tilt. It's all just with the A button. And so what's unique about Min Min, what separates her from Mega Man, is that she can also do this all with the B button and you get the other arm. So you've got, you've got your forward tilt with the B button, you've got your jab with the B button, and you've got your forward air with the B button. Oh, and also back air. I keep forgetting about back air. Back air and forward air are the same thing. It's like Villager, how they shoot the slingshot, Villager and uh, Isabel, how they shoot the slingshot with forward and back air. It's the same thing with Min Min. And another thing that you may have noticed is because you have two different arms here, you can send one jab, or one forward tilt, or one smash attack, or one aerial in one direction, and then with the other arm, send it in the send the other one in the other direction. So you can do it with, with tilt version, you can do it with jab version, you can do it with smash attack version, and of course, uh, you can do it with aerial version. So, for example, if you're going to, if you wanted to like, forward tilt your opponent and they roll behind you and you whiff the first forward tilt when they roll behind you oops when they roll behind you you just toss the other one out see how she shoots the other one backwards so let's pre let's pretend Mega Man dodges this first one he dodges the first one and I toss the other one that way another thing that's important to keep in mind uh, specifically because you have both of these arms um, and this is going to be really good for the first little while before people get used to playing against Min Min, is that if they if they spot dodge or shield the first arm, um, they they usually or sometimes people will have a habit of dropping their shield before the second arm comes because they're not used to facing a character that has you know two jabs or two forward tilts or two forward smashes coming in their direction. They're only used to blocking one of them. So for example. 
Mega Man shields the first one, and then we hit him with the second one. Because he thinks he's safe, he thinks the attack is over, we're going to be in the lag from bringing our arm back, he thinks he's going to be able to come in, come in and punish us, and then we shoot in the second arm. So again, he blocks the first one, drops his shield, and then we get him with the second one. So that's going to be working a lot for the first little while before people get used to playing against Min Min. And even in the heat of the battle, they might forget, uh, they might drop their shield early. There's a lot of attacks that have multi-hits, uh, and people just drop their shield early and get hit by the last hit and die anyways. So it's good to keep that in mind. You always you always want to shoot out both arms when you're, when you're going for like a jab or a forward tilt approach, unless they jump over the first one. If they jump over the first one, it's going to take so long for both of them to come back before you can do anything again that they're just going to jump over you and punish you. So if they jump over the first one or, or they're too high up for you to hit them, don't even bother doing the second one. But if they're staying on the ground, they're grounded, they're spot dodging, they're rolling, always make sure you do the second one to try and catch that roll or the shield drop or the ending lag of the spot dodge. Always be shooting out that second arm when they're on the ground. Now to deal with opponents that keep jumping over your arms, what I like is how the Ram Ram arm, which is, I think it's like the medium damage one, this one actually hits up high. It'll go up on platforms, it'll go down, it'll go down below the ledge, and it'll reach them on platforms. Oops, a little closer. So even if even if they're um, they're they're dodging the first one, they're coming after you. If you have the ram ram out, you you might be able to catch them trying to jump in. So it covers that space. It covers that space like right in front where they would try and jump in at you. So what I like to do is in the early percents, while their percent is still between, you know, like 0 and 80, I like to have the dragon and the ram ram combo so I can kind of catch them trying to jump over the dragon, catch them with the ram ram. And then once they get to uh, kill percents, that's when I like to switch to the big boy arm here because obviously it packs a huge punch and the neutral air, just the neutral air with this thing is actually a kill move. It is so strong, it is actually a kill move. So one thing you might have noticed with the dragon arm is that when you're doing the smash attack version, if you press and hold the A button again after, or the B button I guess, we can do, we can do B dragon arm too. If you press and hold the A button or the B button after releasing it to let the smash attack go, press and hold it again, the dragon will fire the laser. This is really good because the laser covers like three quarters of Final Destination and Battlefield. It is crazy. Look how far this thing goes. Like more than 75% of the stage is covered. So if you really want to play Min Min like a zoner character, you could actually, you know, st start off the stock at the low percents with just double dragons and just keep spamming them with lasers if you want. You can even angle these bad boys up. The lasers actually have a homing property to them, so the lasers will kind of uh, try to home in on their opponent. And of course, you can also angle them downwards. So if somebody's trying to recover, angle that bad boy downwards, zap them with the laser. So much range. So I'm looking over at my other monitor, and I realize I've already been recording for 15 minutes, and we've only talked about the nuances of her arms. So bear with me, but it's time to get into the rest of her moveset and, you know, combos and setups and how you should be playing neutral and how you should be edge guarding. Now we're going to get into all that. So aside from her, oh, I should probably also mention she has this jab combo. So aside from her arms, she also has uh, a bunch of kick moves. If you, if you just tap A, you get this rapid jab combo that like a lot of characters have. You hold down A, you get the, you get the flurry, you get the flurry of kicks. And then you release A, and she releases. Or you could just do the gentleman version, where it's just a three hit combo, you don't do the flurry. So that's just tapping the button. And you can also do it with the B button. You can also do it with the B button. But if you hold the buttons, that's when you get the, um, the arms. Or if you're doing forward tilt, if you're doing forward tilt, all you have to do is tap the A button. Because she's, she's not gonna do the jab combo while walking. She's gonna do forward tilt. So, we have the jab combo if we tap. Down tilt, we got this cool slide thing that uh, Joker has. I think other a couple other characters might have them. Mega Man has one, I believe. I'm playing Mega Man right now, I can just check. Yeah, Mega Man's got a slide. Oh, his slide is actually nice. Look at, look at how long he goes. 
he goes way further than Min Min. So Min Min's got that down tilt slide, which is actually really good at low percents. It's basically uh, instant up smash afterwards, or uh, up tilt you can also do. Get a second up tilt and then kind of go into up airs after that. So the slide is really good. Uh, she gets low profile, so she'll go under, you know, certain moves, certain projectiles. She'll go under them and then get get that slide off, and you can start comboing. Uh, as you just saw, up tilt is this cartwheel. Uh, it's really good if they're in front of you or trying to land on you. But if you if they're behind you like this, sometimes like they have to be right next to you in order to get the hit. I had a lot of matches where like they were they're behind me and I wasn't getting the hit. Oh, maybe I'm just bad. It seems to work in either direction now. So yeah, up tilt is pretty good. There's a lot of recovery time on it though. Like it takes her so long to be able to act again. But um, at, at like 0%, you should be able to get like one or two. Um, it looks like Mega Man's gonna be able to jump out right after that first one. But on heavies, or on people that aren't really uh, DIing or you know playing defense properly, uh, playing the disadvantage state properly, you might be able to get two up tilts out and then go into uh, some up air combos. So speaking of up air, it's like uh, like Captain Falcon, just a just a backflip, hits above. It's pretty good for juggling. It's actually really good that she has this move. I think if she didn't have this move, um, she'd be a lot worse than she already is. Um, but because she has you know some kind of juggle tool and a way to get like vertical combos instead of just this horizontal arm stuff. I think it really helps her kick. So definitely uh, don't sleep on the up air. Do not sleep on the up air. You're probably not going to be getting kills with it, but it's, it's her best aerial combo tool by far. And then lastly in the air, unfortunately, she has one of these dive kicks. Some people love them. Most people hate them. I kind of hate them. They all have this... Um, I don't know if they all have it, but they probably all have it. It's uh, like a Meteor Smash effect at higher percents. Um, but the thing about doing a Meteor Smash dive kick is you're gonna die. So the only time I would recommend ever using it is um, if you're trying to come back to the stage and you know your opponent is gonna try and edge guard you, what you can do is dive kick as soon as they attack. So you, you Meteor Smash them down and you trade with their hit which knocks you up, and then you get to recover. You can kind of use it when recovering, like if you want to get really close to the ledge like that, and you're super, super high up. Um, other than that, I would not recommend using it for the most part. Like, it's you don't, you don't want to be jumping off the stage like in this area here and trying to meteor smash people with it because you're just going to fall to your death. But it is pretty good to get back into a good position to recover really fast because the faster you do that the less time your opponent has to think of their edge guard setup and how they're going to deal with you trying to come back before before they know it you're already in front of the ledge ready to oop. before they know it you're already going to be right in front of the ledge ready to recover there was a, a clip in my Elite Smash video I posted yesterday where every time I hit this Min Min player up, they would always kind of uh, down air to get back to the stage. And I would just wait for that, I would stand underneath them, wait for them to land, and then just up smash them or forward smash them. So you don't really want to use it as, um, as like an offensive tool or uh, a tool to kind of get back onto the stage. Um, unless you have one of those like Dragon Ball Z situations where your opponent gets shot off to one side, you get shot off to the other, you just want to get back to the stage as fast as possible, uh, then yeah, but it's not really a move you want to be using uh, offensively or a move you want to be using to get back down to the ground when your opponent is right there waiting to shield it and punish you. And I think the last thing we have to talk about is her upbeat. On the ground it's this uh, it's this really springy jump, and you can act pretty quickly out of it. Can you even cancel it in midair? No, you can't cancel it in midair, but you can act super quickly after it. Oh, her neutral air. We'll talk about that after. And then if you use up B in the air, uh, you get this. You get this punch, and it's at a very steep angle. It's not like um, Vine Whip or Joker's up B or Violet's up B. It's a very kind of steep angle. It has a decent amount of knockback, 
Um, but you're not really gonna kill anyone with it unless they're uh, up high. See if we can kill this Mega Man with an upbeat. Yeah, even at like 120%, he's barely going any. So not a good kill move, uh, but it is fun to hit with. Um, if you get them in that position, you can just reach up and smack them. If you smack them like way up high, um, you might kill them, but it's not really the greatest of moves. In terms of recovery, her tether seems to get a bit more vertical distance than it does horizontally. Oh, and that's another thing. If, if there's an opponent there, your up B, it feels like it, it, it prioritizes the opponent rather than the ledge. So there have been times when I thought I could recover, but the opponent was like right in this position and my up B smacked them instead of grabbing the ledge. So you gotta be careful for that too. But in terms of grabbing the ledge with this thing, it feels like you can go low, but it's hard to go out horizontally. So what you wanna do is try to get, try to get as close horizontally to the stage as you can, and you can kinda risk it with how low you go. Like, see that? She grabbed it from super, super low. But I feel like if she was if she was that that distance that she was, but out horizontally, she would not have grabbed it. It's just one of those one of those things that you kind of have to like feel out and practice. Let me see if I can show you. So we'll go out over here. See, she can't grab it horizontally from that far out. But we'll do we'll try again. So from this far out. That's that's pretty much like the max. That felt like the max to me. Any further than that, she's not grabbing it. But if we if we get close and then we go low, she can grab it from pretty low. I don't know. Maybe it's the same distance. I haven't like got out the ruler and done pixel measurements or anything like that. It's just kind of like a play and feel for it kind of thing. It just feels like she has more range vertically with her up B than she does horizontally. You can play around with it, get a feel for it, and you, you'll understand what I mean. And last, but definitely not least, probably my favorite move that she has is the neutral air. So as you can see with the ram ram, it's super fast. With the dragon arm, it's a little bit slower. And then with the megawatt arm, it's a lot slower, but this thing will kill Mofo. Look at this. Disgusting. One of those moves, once you get them into about, let's say, like the 120 range, or even lower if they're off stage, like if you're edge guarding with this move, they're they, they gonna die. I'm gonna toss Mega Man off stage, and go for the neutral air edge guard, well, bam, dead. Super dead. So, like, if you get it up high, or you get it close to the, to the blast zone while edge guarding them, it's a super potent kill move. But only only with the B version, um, or the megawatt version. The uh, the dragon version and the ram ram version will not give you that satisfying kill potential. Okay, almost dead from the ledge there. And of course, as um, you know, as an aerial or a smash attack, uh, the megawatt arm is extremely powerful. It's going to be killing people a lot earlier than a hundred. Let's see if we can bring them down to like. 80 or something and kill him at the ledge with a, a smash attack with this thing Just an uncharged smash attack. See what it does. Bam! Per oh my god, not even a hundred percent and he he flew So obviously, uh, you know smash attacks are gonna be more powerful uh, But the neutral air just covers so much range It just it hangs out there it can it can hit them at any one of those points when the ball is swinging around so you can hit them when they're behind you, you can hit them when they're underneath you, oops, and you can hit them when they're above you, Oop. there you go. So overall, it's probably my favorite move that she has. Um, not like the megawatt version, but just the neutral air in general. It's a great out of shield tool. If somebody's pressuring you, you can either, you know, up the out of shield to, to get away from the situation, or you can neutral air them. Oh, I should have mentioned before that up B actually has invincibility on startup. So it's like, it's the perfect getaway option. If you're at high percent and you don't want to risk uh, dropping your shield and, or rolling or doing anything and getting punished and, and dying, all you need to do is just up B out of shield and you're good to go. 
So how do we play Min Min overall? We know how her moves work. We know that down tilt combos into up tilt and up smash and up air is, is good and whatnot. Basically all of her moves that don't use the arms are pretty good combo moves, except down air. Do not use down air. But how do we actually play this character? What how do we how do we do the cool things with it? So like I said at the beginning, you pretty much always want to be shooting out both arms. If they shield the first one and drop their shield, or they spot dodge the first one and the spot dodge ends, you can catch them catch them slipping with that second arm. It's especially good with smash attacks, because they might shield the first one, and then the second one is gonna hit them, and because it's a smash attack, it's gonna be super powerful and end their end their whole existence. So you do one of those, and then you send in the big one. With this double this double arm strategy, you can basically you can almost play her like um, like a projectile character, like B move Zelda or uh, B move Samus that everybody knows and loves. You can kind of stand on the edge like this and just harass them with both your arms. You can angle them up. You could use the ram ram if you want to catch that uh, that jumping in angle. And you have two different. Two different arms you can send out at all times. So you can play an extreme keep away game. There was a ton of matches during my stream when I was facing other Min Min's and they just kept doing this. They had like both the dragons out. They kept shooting the lasers at me. It was covering up so much space on the stage and I could not get in. They got the, the angled ones to catch me going on the platform. They got the downwards ones when I'm trying to recover. And they got the middle ones to take up 75% of the stage. It's ridiculous. So you can totally play her like a spammy, annoying, keep away projectile character like Zelda or Samus. Um, but what I like to do is kind of, kind of get more in their face. You you start tacking on, you start tacking on percent by doing you know the d double arm punches. If you get into a situation where you're up close and personal, her, her jab combo is actually really good. Does a nice you know 13 to 16 percent, and of course. Um, if they're at this kind of medium range and you don't want to throw it an arm because they could just, you know, spot dodge it or jump over it and uh, punish you because they're so close and your arms are so laggy, this is kind of that range where you would go for like the down tilt into up tilt or uh, down tilt into up smash if you want a bit more percent. At, at lower percents, I would probably just start with the up smash, like maybe 0 to 15 or 0 to 100 or 0 to 15 or 0 to 25. Maybe just always go for that up smash to get a little bit extra percent, uh, especially on the heavier characters. Um, but on the lighter characters, watch how high they go. You might want to switch to up tilt a little sooner in order to you know get those up tilt into up air combos. I find it really difficult to approach with her forward air and back air or get much use out of them in general. They have a lot of ending lag, like a lot of ending lag. And if 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 you do want to kind of get a little bit up higher and hit somebody, I would just, you know, ang angle angle the forward tilt or use the ram ram. On stage, your main approach options are going to be like neutral air, walk at them with your tilts, make them approach you by shooting a bunch of lasers at them, and of course, you got your down tilt. Down tilt covers a decent amount of ground really quickly and combos into her other moves automatically. I already mentioned this, but uh, when off stage, uh, I would just recommend going for like the, the megawatt uh, neutral air. Yeah, because you don't get much uh, much angling with the arms in the air. They kind of have to be at that that perfect horizontal angle for you to hit them with the uh, the aerial arms. So it's just it's really tricky to get used to, and. What you might have just noticed there is if you do the um, smash attack arm while falling, you, your character actually kind of does this little stall. She kind of like hops in the air. If you do it, if you do the smash attack one while rising, she doesn't she doesn't do that little stall. But if you're doing it while falling, she'll kind of hop there. And if you're not if you're not like doing it intentionally or you're not used to it, that's totally gonna screw up your aim and where where you think the arm is gonna land once it finally lands um, so you, it's definitely something to kind of keep in mind it might it might actually be beneficial to change the c stick 
um, to, to B moves or tilt moves so that you can reliably do um, these, these aerial arms if you do want to play with that and experiment with the aerial arms. Um, I, for one, don't think the aerial arms are all that great. I think, you know, just neutral air is much better in general and the angles that you can get from the arms uh, do, do the same job that, you know, a forward air or a back air with the arms on the stage would do. Uh, just kind of angling the ram ram up kind of does, does that job in itself just with that one arm. So the, uh, the uses for the, the, the arms in the air I find are pretty limited. And they lag a lot, so kind of, I get, I would, I would recommend staying away from doing that. And you can see that little hop she does as she's falling. If you do the smash arm, it can, it can really throw you off. It was throwing me off so much yesterday. I'd be trying to like hit people with an aerial, and I would hop, and instead of my aerial kind of landing over here, it would land up there on the platform, and I would completely miss them like every time. I would be trying to run off the platform and hit them with a back air, and instead of my back air ending up over here, it ends up back on the platform, which is not what I wanted. So it's definitely something you got to get used to. Um, if you do the tilt version, you know, you don't get that, but it's, it's hard to kind of, it's hard to kind of control that with the, um, with the analog stick, especially if you're changing directions, like here on the platform, trying to do a back air in the other direction. It's hard to kind of move the stick to that direction fast enough without doing the smash version. So yesterday I was getting the smash version so many times and it was extremely frustrating. So all of this just to say her aerial arms, the forward air and the back air, not so bueno. And the last thing that I, I, I noticed as I was, you know, fooling around with Mega Man here is that I forgot to tell you, when you get somebody with a grab, um, not when they break out, not when they break out, you have to finish the grab. Her left arm, the one that's always the dragon, becomes powered up. So you can see it's completely different. Instead of it being spaghetti, it's like this red dragon coil thingy going on, and it's on fire. Um, what this means is it's basically just stronger. Uh, the laser is stronger, and the smash attack itself is stronger. And it already went away, so it, la it looks like it lasts for about 10 to 15 seconds. That was pretty short. We'll do F smash with the regular dragon. Does 14%, and then F smash with the powered up dragon does 18%. So, a little bit stronger. It probably does a little bit more knockback too. Oh, throw setups. Throw setups. Um, this character doesn't really have any. I mean, that, that looks like it works, but it doesn't actually work. Pretty sure you can jump out of that, or air dodge out of that, or just do anything. Um, forward throw is okay. It's just your standard forward throw. Back throw is actually, it can be a, a kill throw when you're right at the ledge at super high percents. It's got a pretty strong back throw. And then up throw. I feel like up throw is also a kill throw, like maybe on the top platform at really high percents. Um, but I'm talking like really high, like maybe like 140, 160, like that kind of high. So yeah, I kind of forgot about throws because she doesn't really get anything off off of them. I know I keep doing that down throw forward air, but it's not it's not really a thing. Um, her most kind of consistent, reliable thing is is the down tilt into the uh, the up tilt or the up smash that I keep doing there. And then after that, um, just kind of juggling juggling them with um, up airs until we find a safe way to land. So that's like how you how you combo with her, how you approach with her, um, how to defend with her. If you're getting pressured, you can just up B. You have invincibility frames at the start of your up B. So even if they, you know, even if even if Ganon's charging up a forward smash and you don't know whether to n dodge or roll at the right time, you don't want to get your shield broken, just up B and just get out of there. It's um, it's like Game and Watch or Pac-Man but it doesn't have a hitbox, so it's slightly less annoying. Um, but I didn't see many people using it at online as a uh, getaway option. But that's probably because we were playing a lot of Min Min Dittos, and a lot of the action was happening from across the stage. So um, that's probably why I didn't see a lot of upbeat. But it's anything with in invincibility frames is good. Being invincible 
has no downsides. There is nothing bad about being invincible. Being invincible is only good things. I feel like I got everything. I've been sitting here scratching my head for about a minute trying to think if there's anything I missed, but I think I got anything. So as I was editing this part, I realized I completely didn't talk about down smash, and I only, you know, briefly touched on up smash in terms of, like, comboing it after a down tilt. So down smash is awesome because it hits on both sides right away. It isn't one of those ones that hits on hits in front first and then hits behind after or vice versa. It hits on both sides right away, which is always good for covering, uh, you know, roll options, whether it's from the ledge or after, um, after a knockdown. And it's decently fast too. It has a lot of recovery time. As you can see, it takes a while for her to stop doing that breakdance thing and, and shield, but it comes out really fast. It's like, that's probably only like a couple frames. It's probably one of the faster down smashes in the game. So it's super fast. Um, and it's one, it's one of her more reliable kill options because uh, the arms take a long time to reach the enemy and they have a lot of lag after, so it's easy for people to uh, punish them. But in terms of down smash, uh, because it comes out so quick, uh, you can usually get those hits off before the opponent has time to, you know, react or shield and whatnot. Um, so it sends them pretty far. It can it can two frame at the ledge, and it will also grab it'll also hit them if they double grab the ledge. So yeah, you can use down smash at the ledge to um, two frame people to get their their ledge roll, or if they grab the ledge once and then drop off and try to grab the ledge a second time and they don't have invincibility frames. That's when you come over here and you down smash them. And then up smash, like I mentioned before, it's a great kill move if people are doing like really dumb landing options like their dive kicks or they're just like, they're just pressing a ton of buttons when they're coming down. You can just shield it and then up smash them out of shield. You can wait underneath the platform and up smash, it'll hit through the platform of course. And just like down smash, it is a lot faster and a lot less lag than forward smash. A lot less recovery time and it still does the job. So there we go, quick little rundown on her down smash and her, uh, her up smash. Back to the end of the video. One more thing. You know, the reason why I don't do these training mode guide videos is because I like to write everything down so that I say everything I want to say and I don't forget anything. Because me being the dumb dumb that I am, just realized I completely skimmed over dash attack. I only did it, you know, like 10 times while trying to do the forward tilt arms and I completely forgot to talk about it. Um, so it's pretty fast, she does this leap forward. It's, a lot of characters have a leap forward, but like, um, you know, characters like Link, where they kind of jump forward with the sword, those ones really suck. These ones where they just like, the hitbox comes out right away, uh, these ones are really good, because you can also like instant dash attack by pressing um, your run direction and the C stick at the same time, pretty much. So these ones, the hitbox comes out super fast, and before before you can even react to it and shield or spot dodge, you're getting kicked in the face. In terms of ending lag, it's got quite a bit of it, like a majority of her moves do. However, dash attack is one of those moves that you only really use if you uh, if you get a knockdown on them, and for example, you know they're gonna roll. Like, say if I knock them down right here, or like right here, for example, and I'm over here, I want to chase them down, and I've I've got a good feeling that they're going to roll this way just from, you know, kind of playing with them and, and uh, reading their habits. It's really good at chasing get-up rolls like that. Other than that, you don't really want to use dash attack as an approach, per se, because it's super easy to kind of like see you running, see it coming, and then just uh, shield it and hit you hit you with like a forward smash or an up smash or just shield it and grab you. Um, I would only really use it in neutral if like you're maybe at that perfect dash attack range and you want to maybe do an instant dash attack. That's an option. Um, but I wouldn't just kind of like you know, you have half a stage between you guys and you're gonna run at them and dash attack. I wouldn't do that. If you wanna do something like that, I would either, uh, you know, kinda forward tilt them, jab at them, or I would run up with a neutral air if you wanted to do, if you if you wanted to do an approach like that. Do not approach like that from like halfway across the stage with a dash attack. Do not do that. 
Or if they're recovering and like you're on the other side of the stage and you want to just like kind of get there and clip their up B as they're as they're doing it, and you're 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 in the process of running there, so you're not gonna have time to get to the ledge, stop, uh, pick your option. In those cases, it's okay. You just kind of run there, dash attack just because it's the only thing you can do. You, you don't have enough time to do anything else. That's fine. So overall, pretty decent dash attack. Comes out super fast. But like most dash attacks, you don't really want to use it in neutral or as an approach tool. You want to use it as a roll punish tool. And hopefully that is the last thing I forgot. Now back to the ending of the video. Like the only other thing that I would, that I would want to do is kind of show you examples of everything that I mentioned. Um, but I, I also put out this uh, Min Min Elite, my grind to Min Min Elite Smash earlier today. And I think that video has uh, a lot of examples of the things that I talked about, the things that you should be doing, the things that you should avoid doing. Has examples of how to get kills with Min Min, um, whether it's by, you know, kind of letting them drop their, their shield after the first forward smash and then sending the second one out. There's a lot of kills with uh, the neutral air, with the megawatt, of course. I even think there's a couple matches of me losing in that video to other min mins where they're just kind of out zoning me with like the double dragon strategy or maybe one one dragon and one ram ram just kind of occupying that, that vertical space when I'm trying to jump over the dragons to try and get in. So I think there's there's a lot of good examples in that video. And one thing that I just noticed while talking that I didn't touch on is that if you if you charge up the um, the F smash for like a little over a second, you get this more powerful laser with like the blue swirls around it. And if you just do like the immediate the immediate release of the F smash, you get the smaller one with the regular laser, just that orange laser. And then if you charge it up a little, you get that stronger blue laser. And of course, you can also do it with the B dragon arm. So we got B dragon arm, A dragon arm, B dragon arm, A dragon arm. So even the B one can do the stronger laser. They can both do whatever kind of laser. It just depends on how long you charge it. So I hope that covers everything. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if you if there was something that uh, I missed, like a whole move or something that I didn't explain or that uh, maybe was confusing and you need me to elaborate on. Also definitely check out my Min Min Elite Smash video and feel free to post any questions in the comments of that video too. And I'll try to answer to the best of my ability and help you out to get you playing Min Min a little bit better than you were before. So, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching all the way until the very end. Subscribe if you like the videos and want to see them on your YouTube homepage. I've been live streaming a lot more too, so if you click the little bell icon beside the subscribe button, you'll get notified whenever I go live, so you can catch me live streaming and hang out in the chat. And you'll also get notifications whenever I upload a new video, so you don't miss anything. Other than that, I've got a lot more video ideas coming up. I've been feeling motivated and inspired to make more videos lately, so stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you later. Happy smashing. Give Uncle a hug. Oh! You did not make coffee this morning. Coffee is the only thing keeping Uncle's ancient heart beating. You want dead Uncle? No! Then you make coffee.